This story began a little over a year ago when a young man whom this department suspected of smuggling arrived in the United States after a four-week trip to Europe. All right, you can pack now, Mr. Randall. It's kind of ridiculous, isn't it, gentlemen? After all, I make umpteen trips to Europe every year for a very respectable importing company. What do you think I'm trying to do, bring in hashish? Mr. Randall, when you were in Switzerland, did you buy any watches for your personal use or otherwise? How'd you know I was in Switzerland? Answer my question, Mr. Randall. Look, Inspector, you've been over me with a fine-tooth comb from head to foot. You've asked me 17 times about my declaration. I've told you and told you that I didn't buy any watches or diamonds or anything else that I didn't declare. What do you want me to do, turn myself inside out to prove it to you? You can go now, Mr. Randall. Well, thank you. The rest of my clothes in there? Yes, sir. Thanks again. Well, what did you find? Not a thing. You must have had the wrong dope on this kid. He's as clean as a whistle. It isn't often that customs investigators have the wrong information on a suspected smuggler. And yet there are occasions when circumstances make it impossible for us to obtain the necessary evidence to arrest such a man, even though we have a strong suspicion that he is breaking the law. And now, in my role as chief of the Division of Investigations, United States Customs, I'm going to tell you about a very smart young man who conceived a racket which took this department almost eight months to uncover. A racket in which a smart operator outsmarted himself. This is Treasury File 3414, United States Customs. The case of the princely pauper. Sis, would you give me a hand? I'm three quarters of an hour late already. I, I didn't know you were going out. Thought maybe you might spend your first night at home with your big sister. After all, I haven't seen you in over a month. Oh, I'm sorry, sis, but the Brewsters are giving a big party. I can't afford to miss it. There won't be anybody there with less than a million bucks. Except you. Oh, what kind of a crack is that? You know I don't give a hoot for these rich monkeys. It's just good business. You meet the right people, play up to them the right kind of way, and... Sooner or later, it pays off. Who knows, I might even catch one of their empty-headed daughters for a bride. That's your ambition, to marry some girl just for her money? How do I know what my ambition is? Maybe I haven't got one. Maybe I'd just like to sit around a country club all day and sit mint juleps. Pop hadn't thrown all his money away before he died, maybe I'd be able to do it. Jimmy, that's what I can't understand. How can you afford it? The way you're living, it costs twice as much as what you make. Where do you get your money? Why don't you let me worry about that, baby? Where, Jimmy? I steal it. I go to all these rich parties and I bring back the silverware. That isn't funny. Well, what is? Your long face and that Sunday school expression? Why don't you get yourself a husband instead of worrying about your brother? Go out and get yourself a man, that's what you need, instead of minding my business. I'm sorry, Jimmy. I... I, I don't mean to mind your business. It's just that I'm so used to it. I, I... I guess I never got over being your big sister. Wait a second. You want me to take you tonight to meet all those rich characters and their gold tip wives? No, thanks. I'll take you. You just say the word and I'll take you. Oh, no. You, you go alone and have fun. I know, Mrs. Brewster will be pleased. I looked all over Switzerland before I finally came up with just what you wanted. It's a good thing my boss didn't know I was spending so much time on it. What do you think of it? Beautiful, beautiful, Jim. Mrs. Brewster will love it. You have excellent taste. Well, thank you. That's just about the finest watch made in Switzerland. It's got 26 jewels, a platinum case, and all those stones are imported from Holland. Mm. What's more, I, uh, I picked it up for a song, 3,600. Say, that is a song. 
3600 Why, a watch like this would cost almost twice as much in America. But uh, how did you get it in? How did you get it past customs? Well, I've got my ways. After all, I haven't worked for an importer for four years for nothing. Oh, you must never tell anybody that I brought it in for you. It might get me in a jam. But any time you want me to bring something back from Europe for you, just let me know. I'll be glad to help. Well, I certainly appreciate it. I'll write you out a check right now. 3600 uh, Yes, that's correct, Mr. Brewster. 3600 Yes, that's right, Mrs. Wilton. $2,700. And I'm awfully glad you like it. Any time you want me to bring anything back from Europe for you, just let me know. Only it would be best for both of us if you sort of kept us quiet. Thank you, Mr. Devine. I was very glad to bring it back for you. Yes, that's correct. Well, thank you. And it's just the way it was the last time he came back from Europe. Five or six social calls within a few days after his boat docks, and within a week, several of his acquaintances are showing off new items of jewelry. And you still haven't been able to locate his source of supply? No, sir. We've checked with practically every known diamond dealer in Holland, France, and Switzerland. They've never even heard of James Randall. Of course, he was given a thorough examination when his ship landed in New York. Luggage, clothing, everything. I even had his stateroom searched from top to bottom, and there was nothing. This would seem so impossible, Chief. Randall was under surveillance from the moment his ship docked in New York until he cleared through customs. He contacted nobody, made no attempt to reach anybody who had been aboard ship. Yet within two days after his arrival, his friends were in possession of the jewelry. Well, that doesn't leave us much choice, Trumbull. We haven't been able to catch him actually smuggling these diamonds in, so we'll have to try another approach. Like going undercover? It seems like the logical move to me, Trumbull. Try to strike up an acquaintance with Randall and some of his friends. Find out what sort of a deal he makes with them. And if it's at all possible, buy one of these diamonds from him yourself. Right, Chief. For the next few days, Agent Trumbull spent a good deal of time checking on James Randall's intimate circle of friends. And by frequenting the clubs and cocktail lounges they frequented, was able to strike up acquaintance with Randall himself. Oh, yes, sure. Gilpin's the name, Andrew G. Gilpin from Omaha. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Gilpin. My name's Randall. Did you say you were in stocks and bonds? That's right, stocks and bonds. By taking advantage of Randall's obvious interest in Andrew G. Gilpin's financial status, Agent Trumbull was able to solidify their relationship. And within a week, they were practically fast friends. Oh, yeah. thanks. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, my wife's coming in from Omaha for our wedding anniversary next month, and I haven't the faintest idea what to buy her. Why, uh, with all your money, that ought to be a snap. <laughs> yeah, it ought to be, except all my so-called money isn't exactly mine. You see, my father still holds the purse strings. So you won't be able to spend more than $12,000? <laughs> Frankly, I won't even be able to spend more than 500 now, what sort of a mink coat can you get for 500? Well, look, why get her a mink coat? Uh, why don't you pick up, oh, two and a half carat uh, solitaire? $500? Where can I get it? You can't, but maybe I could. I mean, after all, I, uh, I am in the importing business, you know. Oh? Importing diamonds? Well, no. No, but see, I do a lot of traveling for the company I work for, like I'm going up to Canada in a few days. Well, now, diamonds aren't as expensive up in Canada because Canadians don't have to pay any duty on them when they're brought in from abroad. Yeah, but what good would that do you? You'd still have to pay a duty on anything you brought in from Canada. Would I? You mean you can get stuff through customs without being caught? One stone, why not? Look, if you're interested, why don't you give me a ring on Saturday and maybe we can work something out. Okay, Jimmy. I'll call you on Saturday. Hello? Oh, hi, Gil. I was wondering if you'd made up your mind about that diamond solitaire. Sure, I made up my mind. How about you? Can you get one for me? Uh-huh. Well, when are you leaving? By plane. Yes, I certainly would appreciate it. Okay, you've got yourself a diamond solitaire. Right. I'll call you as soon as I get back. Yeah, bye. 
Oh, hi, sis. Who's that on the telephone? Oh, it's just a friend of mine. Someone who wants a diamond solitaire? Why, Kay, I'm surprised at you. You've been listening to my phone conversation. Jimmy, I want to talk to you. Huh? I said I want to talk to you. Okay, what are you getting so excited about? Jimmy, I've been speaking to some friends of yours. Mrs. Brewster and Mrs. Wilton. They were both at the club meeting. So? Oh, don't look at me as if it meant nothing to you. Mrs. Brewster said that you brought her back a wristwatch from Switzerland, a diamond watch. And then later on, Mrs. Wilton told me you brought something back for her, too, a pendant. Look, uh, sis, I wish you'd mind your own business. Jimmy, you've been smuggling, bringing jewelry back into this country without paying a duty on it. What, don't you know what that means? Look, what are you worried about? I just did a couple of favors for a few friends of mine. Favors? By committing a crime? Is that your idea of doing a favor? Oh, Jimmy, what's happened to you? I've grown up, that's what happened. I learned how to do things for myself, to get what I want and the money to pay for it. Pop was alive, I had everything I wanted. Yes, but Pop isn't alive anymore. Things are different now. Yeah, sure. Only I'm the same. Look, I can't turn myself upside down just because we don't have money anymore. I didn't ask to be brought up with a silver spoon in my mouth. I didn't ask to be sent to private schools and have polo ponies and live on the Riviera for a year. If Pop wanted us to get used to living like that, he should have left us enough money to keep on with it. Oh, he tried, honey. What good is trying, the pompous old fool? He didn't even have brains enough to hold on to what he had. Don't you say that again! You think you're pretty smart, don't you? Smacking me like I was a ten-year-old kid. I ought to smack you, too. You go right ahead. Get out of here, will you? Will you just get out and leave me alone? Jimmy, you've got to stop what you've been doing. Because if you don't do it, I'll stop you myself. That's crazy, Kay. It's just plain crazy. I can't call everything off just because you don't want me to bring anything back from Canada. I've made promises to these people. What people? I thought you were going to bring back just one ring, a solitaire. Well, there's a girl down at the office. That... And who else? How many other people have you made promises to? Oh, Jimmy, can't you see what you're doing? All right, all right. I cheat, I steal, I lie. Now, are you satisfied? Your brother's a crook, so forget him. Honey, all I want to do is help. I don't need any help. That's the whole trouble. You're always trying to help me. Pop, too, he was always protecting me, always making things easy for me, like I couldn't do anything for myself. Then all of a sudden, I was on my own. All of a sudden, I had nothing to lean on. No money, no job, no nothing. Oh, honey. The same thing happened to me. Yeah, yeah, and what did you do about it? You crawled back into your shell. You don't even go out anymore. You don't even have any dates. Well, that's not the point. What is the point, Kay? Honey, listen. I've made a lot of money the last six months. I can make a lot more before anybody's the wiser. Then I'll clear out. I'll go to Chicago or, or the West Coast. I'll make a new start. I'll take you with me. No, Jimmy. I, I don't want that. And you don't want it either. You're going to quit this once and for all. Am I? I'm warning you, Jimmy. You've got to stop. And if I don't? Well, then I'll... I'll report you to the government. All right, tell them. Call them up if you want. Send me to jail if, if you really dare. Jimmy... Go ahead, I'm gonna call your bluff. If you want me to go to jail, I'll go just as soon as you're ready. Yes. Oh, from New York. Yes, put him on, please. Hello, Trumbull. How's it going? I just had another meeting with Randall, Chief. 
Yes, I think it's all set. He's offered to bring in a solitaire for me on his way back from Canada. Yes, sir. He'll be gone for two days, and he's leaving this afternoon at 4 o'clock. Flight 16. Flight 16 at 4 o'clock. Fine, Trumbull. Get in touch with McCoy right away and have Randall shadowed. A 24-hour surveillance from the time he leaves New York until the time he gets back. I want a full report on this. Everything he does, everyone he sees. And this time we'll find out for sure exactly how he gets by customs. That afternoon, when James Randall took off for Toronto from a New York airport, he was under the surveillance of Treasury agents. These men trailed him to his hotel in Toronto and took a room there, where they could observe him at relatively close range. For two days, they watched every move he made, making careful note of the places he visited and the people he contacted. On the morning of the third day, Randall checked out of his hotel took a cab to the airport in Toronto and returned to New York, still under surveillance. Upon arrival, customs inspectors checked his luggage and his clothing, but nothing was found. No trouble. No, absolutely nothing, either in his luggage or on his person. That's right. And furthermore, he made no contacts in Toronto with any jeweler or diamond dealer. So he must have been tipped off in some way and deliberately laid low on this trip because we're positive that he brought no diamonds into New York. Well, that's very strange, Chief, because I'm getting ready to go over to Randall's apartment right now. Yes, he called me just a moment ago, told me to come right over and pick up my solitaire. That's a beauty, isn't it? It's worth at least 900. Only you uh, mustn't ever tell anybody I brought it in for you. We both might find ourselves in a jam. Well, aren't you going to say something? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. I'm very grateful, Jimmy. I'm just amazed, that's all, to think that you can get a ring like this past customs. How in the world do you do it? Why ask questions? I've got a lot of friends. Some of them I do favors for, some of them do favors for me. You mean some of these friends of yours are customs inspectors? Well, why not? They're human, just like anybody else. <laughs> you haven't paid me yet. Do you want to write a check for the 500, or did you bring it in cash? Hmm? What's the matter? Something wrong? Not as far as I can see. I was just wondering where you bought this stone, from a recognized dealer in Canada? No, not exactly. You see, a recognized dealer might report the sale to customs. I got it from a private owner. Oh. Well, then how do you know how much it's worth? A private owner could have sold you a phony. Are you kidding? I know diamonds like the back of my hand. And you're sure it's worth about $900? Look, uh, Gil, if you don't want the ring, you don't have to take it. Look, I'm not saying you're trying to put one over on me, but suppose someone put one over on you. I just think I ought to have it looked at by a jeweler. Look, the deal's off. If you feel that way, let's forget the whole thing. Why? What are you afraid of if it's worth what you say it is? It's worth more. Then why not have it examined by an expert? Okay, you want a jeweler to look at it? We'll go around to old man Decker's and see what he's got to say. It's just a couple of blocks from here. All right, let's go. Okay. This is a very beautiful stone. Good color. Exceedingly well cut. It's worth about uh, $850. May I have a look, Mr. Deckers? Well, Gil, what are you trying to do? You heard what the man said. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, just a second. This won't take very long. I just want to see what it looks like under a magnifying glass. Well, are you satisfied? Yeah. I am now. This is a very inferior diamond, Mr. Deckers. In the first place, it's much too shallow to be two and a half carats. In the second place, there's carbon in the corner of the base of it. I'd say it was worth about $200. And you were going to charge me $500. Well, then don't take it. Forget the whole deal. I'm afraid it's not going to be that easy, Jimmy. I'm an agent for the United States Customs. I'm going to have to take you both in for questioning. Well, I haven't broken any custom laws. Nevertheless... Look, I just told you that I smuggled that ring in. I bought it right here in the United States from Deckers. Before I even went to Canada, he made it for me. 
That's the truth. He buys stones for me all the time. I make bracelets for him and, and pendants and all sorts of things. Oh, I didn't know there was anything wrong. Just the same, you're going to have to come with me, Mr. Deckers. I want a full report. That's kind of foolish, isn't it, Jimmy? Put your hands up, quick. Turn around and face that door. Come on, Deckers, get some rope. Tie him up. Don't make me do it. Don't make any more trouble for me. You've done enough already. You heard what I said. Get the rope and get it fast. Hurry up, will you? You're taking all day. Be smart, Randall. What you're doing now is just making it worse for yourself. You know you'll never get away with this. Shut up. Resisting arrest, assaulting a federal officer? It's bad enough before, but with these charges added to it, you won't have a chance. You won't either, Deckers. You're an accomplice. I am not. I didn't do anything crooked. All I did was sell him diamonds for a decent price. I didn't know he was telling people he was smuggling them. Keep quiet, you moron. Why should I? Why should I take the blame for something I didn't do? He wanted cheap diamonds, stones with flaws in them. I told you to keep quiet! It won't work, Jimmy. You're just getting yourself in deeper and deeper. The more you do now, the longer you'll have to stay in jail. What do I care how long it takes? You think a couple of years will make any difference to me after what I've done? You'll never get away, Jimmy. Oh, won't I? Quick, Kay, I'm in a terrible jam. I need some help. Will you throw some clothes in a suitcase and bring me all the cash you got in the house? Jimmy, what happened? Look, I'm in a jam, I told you. Stop asking questions. I gotta get out of here. Come on, move! Oh, well... I'll get that. Just bring me the strong box out of the bedroom and bring in the suitcase. Jimmy, you've got to tell me what happened. Well, the guy I sold the ring to was a treasury agent. Well, where is he? What have you done to him? Nothing, nothing. Look, they're gonna be here any minute. Every second counts. It counts for what, Jimmy? What good will it do you to run away? I should have stopped you when I said I would. Look, will you stop talking and get me what I need? Help me, Kay, please. This time I really need it. Oh, honey, you can't keep on running forever. You've got to stop sometime before it's too late. They're coming after me. I've got to get out of here. Jim, it's better if you stay. Are you crazy? If they Jim, catch don't me... Move. You can't. I've got to get out of here. Don't move. This is the way. It's the only way. Randall, open the door. i got to make a run for it. Jimmy! Help me, Kate, please. I am helping you, honey. For the first time in my life, I'm really helping you. smuggling racket, which James Randall used to sell inferior jewelry at high, extremely profitable prices, was only temporarily rewarding. As a result of evidence produced by Agent Trumbull and turned over to the New York police, Randall was convicted in the state court of conspiracy to defraud. The sentence was four to eight years in the state penitentiary where Randall is still serving his term. In addition, the Treasury Department was able to collect a substantial amount of money on income taxes, which Randall had neglected to pay on his ill-gotten earnings.